around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, the United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> business to take care of. You just keep on riding, old horker. Well, come on out that barn, Stokes. You got to settle up. I ain't doing no business with you, Oak. You lost the right to be choosy when that fire burned your feed crop, and you know it. I can't see how that fire's any affair of yours. You borrowed money in that crop of yours, didn't you? Sure, from your paw. Well, you can just pay it back to me. I ain't going to do it. Your pa's waited a long time, but he'll get his money. He ain't the kind to come riding up here a week after the fire to collect it, neither. <laughs> he don't have to. I'm doing it for him. Well, you ain't going to get it from me. Oh. Now, you listen here, Stokes. I took over pa's business. Everything that's coming to him is coming to me now. You mean you foreclosed on your own pa? Yeah. I got a paper here, all stamped legal, says I can collect what's owing to Pa. Right now. Uh, not for me, you can't. I ain't got it. Well, no, ain't that a shame. Guess I'll just take along something, make up for it. Hey, you look I'm here, sure old... I ain't got much around here, Stokes. Guess I'll take a look around, maybe out back. Out the corral, maybe. Now, you stay away from my horse. You recollect you got yourself a pretty good stud horse. Why, well, you miserable... You recollect I made you an offer for him about a week back. A good, fair offer. I wouldn't sell you one of my horses if I had to starve for You ain't going to worry about selling me nothing. I'm just going to take that horse. You can't and do we'll it. we'll call that dead old square, Stokes. Because I don't want to have to call the law down on you and take over your land. Well, I ain't going to allow it. You ain't going to do nothing but go on in there and leave me out that horse. No, but it ain't right. It's as right as it's going to get. The law is with me, Stokes. Come on, get along now. Well, fetch me that horse. I'll go in there and fetch you myself. I've been wanting to throw a rope on it. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I'll get him. It's more likely. But don't let me hear about you mistreating him like you do your other horses. What you do about it? I'll come and get him. I'll take him back. Not after he's mine. You hurt him and I'll come and get him. I'll get him if I have to kill you. Because Elijah Cuddlestone was what you might call a grassroots politician, his support was constantly in demand. Here's part of his public reply to one such request. I will not, I will not climb aboard his bandwagon. I say, I say his bandwagon is one I will never be on. Do you hear? Yeah, I mean, I won't support a man whose policies never have, that is, they have never reflected the will of the people. Well, Elijah laid it right on the line, didn't he? The phrase on or aboard the bandwagon that he used had a political origin that was literal. Politicians and local leaders actually would climb aboard the bandwagon that carried the band and various vote-for type signs used by campaigning politicos and parades and so forth. 
In this manner, they physically displayed their support for the individual and his cause. Even though the band, the wagon, and the practice were long familiar to pre-election politics in America, the phrase dates only from around the turn of the century. Like I say, there's times when a man just sort of sinks back into himself and thinks about things, you know. Uh huh. Yes, sir, it comes over me every so often. It's a time when I get to studying and figuring and don't want to talk much. Just kind of lost in thoughts, you might say. Yeah. I declare sometimes I go on being quiet like this for days, and it's done days at a time. I don't hardly say nothing at all. Just sit back and think about the world and all that. Don't hardly talk at all. You ever get that way, Mr. Dillon? Not talking? <coughs> guess you didn't hear me, Mr. Dillon, ask you a question. I say, do you ever get I, that I'm way? I'm sorry, not... Chester. I guess I was just sunk back in myself thinking and not talking. Well, now you see, that's what happens to me, too. I no. get to the... Well, somebody sure riding up front street awful fast, ain't they? Yeah. Uh, that's a runaway horse, Joseph. Come on, let's catch him. Somebody like to kill him. Yeah. Them quirt marks go right through his hide. Those aren't quirt marks, Chester. This horse has been bull whipped. Oh, now who would do a thing like that? I don't know, but I'm sure gonna find out. Come on, let's take him over to the livery stable. Yes, sir. Come on. Come on, old man. We'll get you patched up good as new. Oh, oh, Doc. Doc. Ah, <laughs> what do you hear? That's it. Oh. Somebody did quite a job on that horse. You know who it is? No, Doc, I don't. I just found him running. And whoever it is, I think he'd be ashamed to claim him. Are you taking him over to the stable? Yeah, I figured I'd leave him there and see who comes after him. Good, I'll come along. I think I have some stuff that'll make him feel better. I have? Oh, that's fine, Doc. A man who'll do a thing like that ought to be whipped himself. Yeah. And I wouldn't mind doing the job. I'll take him on over, Chester. You go down after the mail, will you? Yes, sir. Uh, I'll meet you back at the office, huh? All right, sir. Come on. Doc? Hello, Moss. Moss. Where'd you get that one? I was hoping you'd know where he came from, Moss. He's a runaway. I've never seen him before. He sure carved up some, though, ain't he? Yeah. Doc's going to look him over. I'll put him in a stall for you. All right. Uh, I'm going to leave him here with you, Moss. I figure his owner will come and claim him. All right, Marshal. I want you to do something for me, if you will. What's that? I'm going to take his saddle and his bridle. Why... Sure, Marshal. And whoever claims the horse, you send him over to me to pick him up, huh? Because I want to meet that man. Do you want another beer, man? Uh, no, no, thanks, Kitty. <laughs> Besides, at the rate you're selling it tonight, looks like you might run out. <laughs> The boys have worked up a real good thirst, all right. No, that doesn't exactly make you mad, does it? No. Not as long as they can pay for it. Marshal! Marshal Dillon! Oh, hello, Dan. Uh, 
Kitty, you know Dan Stokes. Oh, sure. You? Hello, Dan. Have oh. a chair. Yeah, thank you, ma'am. Uh, you want a beer, Dan? Oh, no, no thanks, Miss Kitty. Uh, Marshal, I got something to ask you. Uh, what is it, Dan? I want to know something, Marshal, uh, legal like. Well, I'll help you if I can. Uh, I want to know uh, can a man come up with a paper in his hand and take your horse? Can he do that, Marshal? Well, that depends, Dan. Did you owe him something? No, not him, Marshal. Not ever him. He just wanted that stud horse. Oh? Well, you better tell me about it. Well, it's, it's that old Parker. I never owed him nothing, but I did owe his paw. He says he took over his paw's business and he come with a paper and took my horse. Had he tried to buy your horse? Yeah, he sure had, but I wouldn't sell. Not to him. Oh, why not? Because he's a mean man, Marshal. A mean man with animals. I don't sell my stock to people like him. Now I'm going to get him back. I'd like to do it legal-like, but I ain't too particular. Yeah. Uh, Dan, what did your horse look like? Oh, he was a real good stud horse, Marshal. A big roan with a blaze. I raised him from a foal. No man's going to harm him. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, Dan, uh, I'll look into it. Now, Harker may be within his rights, but uh, uh, I'll see what I can do. Uh, Marshal, you know Oat Harker? Uh, you might say that we've had kind of an introduction, yeah. Well, I'd like to stay on the right side of the law, but I don't aim to have that horse hurt, and that's for certain. Well, <laughs> thanks, Marshal. Goodbye, Miss Kitty. Goodbye, Dan. So long, Dan. Matt, was that the horse you told me about? The runaway you found this month? Yeah. Are you going to tell Dan Stokes about it? I'm going to wait and see if old Harker shows up to claim him, Kitty. This cussy long was 40 times a day. Prairie down, just a little glance of the Hey! Then they went, oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, mister. Why don't you watch what you're doing? Well, I was only sweeping that dirt out the door, and you just happened to walk in at the wrong time. Mm. Where's the marshal? Yeah, well, he's down having some breakfast. I expect he'll be back in a few minutes. Go on and get him. Well, now, just a I minute. I said, go here. on, I... get the marshal. You look at here who you're telling to go and get somebody. Somebody want to see me? Mr. Dunlap, this Never man mind. says he... Never mind, I'll do my own talking. Well, suppose you do it then, mister. What do you want? I hear you've got my saddle and bridle. Your name, old Harker. How do you know? Now, you got quite a reputation, Mr. Harker. For handling horses, anyway. Well, that's my business. Give me my saddle. I want to ask you something, Harker. Did you give that horse a beating? What a man does to his horse is his own business, ain't it? You got something to prove that he's your horse? <laughs> yeah. Old man Stokes come crying to you, huh? All right, Marshal, I got this paper. Hey, go on. Look at it. All drawn up by Lawyer Reeves. It's a good paper. Uh-huh. You really hogtied old Stokes to get that horse, didn't you? I get what I want. Yeah. So you can half kill it, huh? Marshal, that's my horse. What I do to him is my affair. Now, you just give me my saddle and my bridle, I can get out of here. All right, so is your horse, but I want to tell you something, Harker. If I ever hear you beating him or any other stock of yours, I'm going to come after you. You got a law about a man and his horse? I'll find one. Hmm. Chester, give him his saddle. Yonder it is. <laughs> You get out of here. Sure didn't know you had such a kind heart, Marshal. Mr. Dillon, 
Is that horse sure enough he is? Well, that's what the paper said, Chester. Oh, morning, Matt. Oh, hold Chester. on, Doc. Say, Matt, who's that fellow that came out of here carrying a saddle and a bridle? That was old Harker, Doc. He's on his way over to the livery stable to get that runaway. It's his horse. Well, he's too late. Well, what do you mean? The horse is gone. What? Huh? I went over there a little while ago to see how he was coming along, and, and he wasn't there. Well, where is he? Stolen, according to Moss Grimmick. But it seemed to me he didn't care at all. He, he said he figured the horse would be better off back where he belonged. Yeah. All right, come on, Chester. Get your stuff together. Yes, sir. You know where you're going, Mac? Yeah, Doc, and I just hope I'm not too late. Hometowns in America have a lot in common, yet they're each one of a kind. Take, for example, Pulaski, Virginia. Every day is another day of sawdust in the air at Pulaski, but it's clean and fine and white. And besides, the Pulaski and Coleman Furniture Companies are mostly what make Pulaski go. If you're driving down from Washington on U.S. Highway 11, you'll pass right through Pulaski, and you can stop at Don Keister's Gap Restaurant for that good Virginia country ham sliced thick. Fair weather finds Piedmont Airlines touching down at New River Valley Airport, nearly two hours closer than the old Roanoke Terminal. If you're in Pulaski at the right time, you can catch a ball game between Pulaski and Dublin. Or, if you're staying longer, a season ticket to the concert in Blacksburg at BMI or just the thing. And those Civil War cannons still need a nice-sized park. But if your hometown is Pulaski, you already know this. We only wanted to remind you, it's still there. in time, Mr. Dillon? I don't know, Chester. Old Harker had a few minutes on us, and that's all he'd need. Yeah. We'll ride right on out to the corral, huh? Wait, Mr. Dillon. Huh? Look over there on the ground. Where? That's old man Stokes. Yeah. Oh. Dan? He's all beat up, Mr. Dillon. Dan. It's Matt Dillon, Dan. Can you get on your feet? Uh, sure. Uh, <laughs> Here, let me help you. Sure, Marshal. <clears throat> Old Harker do this to you. Keep, keep him away from my horse, Marshal. He's back there with my horse. You, you kill that horse, sure. Are you all right? Oh, yes, I'm, I'm all right. You you go get him, Marshal. Keep him away from my horse. All right, Dan. All right, you just stay here and take it easy, huh? Come on, Chester. Yes, sir. Look there, he was right. Old Harker's in the corral after that horse. Well, from here, it's hard to tell who's after who. Well, that stud's really going after him. Harker's going to have trouble roping him. That horse has gone plum crazy, Mr. Dillon. Hey, Harker! He found that, Dillon, in my horse. I come to get out and go through it. Ah. Harker, that horse will kill you. Yeah. No horse living I can't handle. Yeah. Mr. Dillon, he's working him right back into that loose fence. Yeah. Harker! Look out, Harker! They're down, Mr. Dillon. They're both down. Oh, come on. Looks like the horse got a broke leg. Uh, now we'll try to drag Harker out from under him. Yes, sir. You get over on that side. Yeah, here, let me lift up. Let me... A little more. He's gone. Yeah. The fence is there, there. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Dead, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. Yeah, he sure is. It wouldn't have been much good living the way that horse left him. No, sir. Well, we'll borrow a wagon from Dan and take him back to town. What about the horse? 
Pretty bad cripple. Yeah. Well, I guess there's only one thing to do. Marshal! Wait a minute, Marshal! Wait, wait a minute! What is it, Dan? That horse. Don't, don't shoot him. That horse. Oh, now, Dan, he's got to be put away. He's got a broken leg. You know, you can't leave him like this. Yeah, but, Marshal, if he's got to be shot, I'll do the shooting. He, he's still my horse. All right, Dan. Come on, Chester. seem fair that you had to suffer. I'm, I'm awful sorry, boy. Directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The music was composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns were composed by Ray Kemper and Bill James. Featured in the cast were Parley Bear as Chester, Howard McNear as Doc, and Georgia Ellis as Kitty. George Walsh speaking. Join us again next week for another story of the western frontier of America in the 1870s on Gunsmoke. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.